Now we solve the four. For the final exam of GP2 of the fall 2023. The question said, in the circuit shown below, the electromotive force epsilon one and the current I1 and the current I2 are in nodes. The current I3 equals two ampere as a correct direction. Other electromotive forces and resistors have the value shown in the figure. The electromotive force are idealized with no internal resistances. Question one, apply Kirchhoff's rule for a suitable loop to find the current I2. Is the direction of I2 shown in the figure is correct? Let's try to discuss our circuit. So as, as, we, as we have here, I1 is in no, I2 is in no, and epsilon one is in no. The question, determine the current I2. Question A, what is the current I2? He says, apply Kirchhoff's rule for a suitable loop. What is uh, Kirchhoff's rule? Kirchhoff's loop, the sum of the potential difference across all the elements of the circuit is equal to zero. At first, let's try to draw the potential differences across all the elements of the circuit. Theta, uh, for, for the electromotive force, the potential difference is from the negative to the positive side. The same thing here is from the negative to the positive side. Across the resistor is opposite to the current because it's consuming. So this is the potential difference. And this is the potential difference. For epsilon one from negative to positive because it's a, it's a battery. For the resistor is opposite to the current. Okay, now if we apply Kirchhoff's rule on the upper loop, you see here that we have I1 is a no, epsilon one is a no, and I2 is a no. So it's not possible to determine I2 because we have two unknowns on the upper loop. So on the lower loop, on the lower loop, what do we have? Before applying Kirchhoff's uh, loop rule, we have to assign positive direction. Let's assign the clockwise direction as positive. So epsilon one is opposite to the positive, epsilon two is opposite to the positive direction. So we write minus epsilon two. And epsilon two is equal four volt. The potential difference across R2. Okay, let's write like that. Minus epsilon two. And then we will substitute by the numbers minus R2, I2. Why here is minus R2, I2? Because the direction of the potential difference across the resistor R2 is opposite to the positive direction. Then let's continue. Also here we have minus, minus R3, I3. And here is plus epsilon three. Their sum is equal to zero. Now just we substitute by the numbers. So we're gonna write, minus four minus R2, one times I2, okay? Minus R3, three times two ampere plus 18 equals zero. So we're gonna get I2 equal minus four minus six plus 18, that's all, divided by one, one ohm, divided by one. Okay, so that's all. So our current is gonna be eight ampere. We are done. The current I2 is eight ohm. The question B said, find the current I1. Uh, before, is the direction of the current I2 correct? So you see here that I2 equal eight ampere, which is positive quantity, so the direction is correct. Or we can say it's real. Question B, find the current I1. Is the direction of I1 shown in the figure is correct? So what is I1? I1 is here. Now we know I2, we know I3, but we don't know I1. 
I2 is at its 8 ampere. I3 is 2 ampere. So if we apply junction rule on the point uh, C, junction rule on the point C, what we're going to get? The sum of the currents entering the loop and entering the junction is equal to the sum of the current leaving the junction. You see that I2 is entering the junction. So we write I2. I1 is leaving the junction. I3 is also leaving the junction. So I2 is going to be I1 plus I3. The sum of the current entering the junction is equal to the sum of the current leaving the junction. Of course, we are talking about algebraic sum. The question concerns I1. So I1 is equal I2 minus I3. I2, we said it's eight. I3 is, uh, what is it? It's two ampere. So I1 is six ampere, which is positive quantity, so is correct direction. The direction of I1 is correct. Now let's move to question C. Find the electromotive force epsilon one. Epsilon one is on the upper loop, so we will use loop rule, loop rule. On which loop? On the upper loop. What do we have? The sum of the potential differences across all the elements of the circuit is equal to zero. So we assign a positive direction. As usual, I will assign the clockwise direction. Epsilon one is opposite to the positive direction. So we write minus epsilon one plus R one I one, epsilon one plus minus epsilon R one I one. Okay, let's check again. Uh, plus R two I two. plus uh, epsilon two equals zero. Just be substituted by the numbers. So we're gonna get epsilon one is equal. All of this, R1, how much R1? R1, I1. R1, uh, okay, let's write here I1 because now we know the quantity of I1. I1 is six. So we're gonna get two times six. Q times six, R1, I1 plus R2, I2. R2 is one multiplied by eight. Plus epsilon two, epsilon two is four. So we're gonna get eight plus four, 12 plus 12. So epsilon one is 24 volt. Okay, that's all. Let's continue. In this question, we have to find the potential difference VA minus VC. What is VA minus VC? This is a point C and this is our point A. So VA minus VC is the following. So it's gonna be epsilon three minus R3 I3. So VA minus VC equal epsilon three minus R3, I3, that's all. Epsilon three, how much? So it's gonna be 18 minus three times two. Three times two is six, 18 minus six is 12 volt. So VA minus VC is 12. We are done. Let's continue. The last question said, which electromotive force is or are producing electric power and which one are consuming electric power? So how to know that the electromotive force is producing uh, or consuming? How to know that? So if the current is leaving the positive side of the battery, and entering the negative side of the battery, in this case, the battery is producing energy. Or producing power. So if the current now 
It's entering the negative, the positive side. I'm leaving the negative side. In this case, the current, yeah, the battery is a consuming power or energy. Okay, so we have to check the direction of the current on the circuit. For epsilon one, the current is entering the negative, leaving the positive, so it's producing. For epsilon three, the same thing, the current is entering the negative, leaving the positive, so it's producing. For this uh, epsilon two battery, the current is leaving, is leaving the negative, so it's consuming. So we can say that epsilon one, and uh, epsilon three are producing, epsilon two is consuming. That's all. Now the question said, determine the electric power produced or consumed by each electromotive force. It's asking about the power. The power produced by epsilon one, it's gonna be epsilon one multiplied by, by the current by what? Okay, so it's gonna be six multiplied by epsilon one, how much? How much we said epsilon one? 24. So we write uh, 24 multiplied by the current I want six. 24 multiplied by six. So we're gonna get 144. What? Produce it. Okay. What is the power consumed by epsilon two? It's epsilon two, I two. So how much? Epsilon two, we said is four, I two is uh, eight. Eight multiplied by four, so is 32 what? Consumed, and this produced. it. Let's continue. The power produced by the third uh, the third uh, battery. How much? Gonna be epsilon three multiplied by i b. So how much? It's gonna be eighteen multiplied by two. So the result is thirty six. What produced? That's all. We are done with this question or this problem. Thank you so much, and see you in problem. Or, or